what's up my provocative little pink pearl apples this is rob from a gay eye plays and today we are back with another installment of the weekly night wave the series where we take a look at this week's acts and find the most efficient or most entertaining way to take them on in addition to all of that we do have a warframe of the week and let me tell you my love runs deep for this one because they are hands down my favorite kuva lich hunters and then as always i like to bring you guys a little bit of a watch list while you do your grinding for the week so let's go ahead and jump on into this week's app Actually, before we do, I'm very curious. I want you guys to let me know down in the comments below. Are you guys like actively doing your weekly night waves? Are you more like passively doing your weekly night waves? Because legit, I haven't been on top of mine as much as I should be. In fact, you could probably tell by my level um, because there's really not that many rewards that are like calling out to me like really the only things that i'm super duper interested in of course is the three pack of forma uh the aura forma and then the umbra forma everything else is like been there done that got all of this already i don't really feel like i want to work for any of that if i'm going to be completely honest with you so and of course the cred offerings that they have too like the only thing that we really have in there for like re reusability is maybe some kuva but i'm already sitting at almost like half a million kuva so part of me is just like Bleh! not really all that interested um so i don't know active passive let me know what you're doing now this first one is one that for some reason I can never fucking do. This one and the graffiti one, I always forget, and by the end of the day, it's gone. So uh, we have expressive as our daily, which is play one emote. Yes, I'm that bad. We have good friend, God, DE's guilting us real early. Uh, so it's your weekly quest for Clem. We also have Jailer, which is complete three capture missions. So easy, so nice. Uh, we have Vault Looter, which is unlock four derelict vaults. Uh, we have Venus Bounty Hunter, which is complete five different bounties in the Orb Ballast. Ooh, I don't know if that's going to get done. Uh, Venus Miner, mine six rare gems or ore in the Orb Ballast. Still one of my favorites. Eximus Executioner. This is the Elite Weekly. This is kill 100 Eximus. Done done evaporated um we have unlock relics we can evaporate those eximus while we're unlocking the relics and that is unlock 10 relics now the big overlap that we have here is of course um the jailer because you can do that while you are doing your unlock relics mission or you can actually go ahead and do that during the oroken derelict vault in fact that's how i prefer to do my derelict vaults is capture and then also like run all of the four different keys on just toss that on neja and it's like a good freaking day um beyond that everything else to me is like the the one thing i'm looking at i was like mm, don't know if you're gonna get done mr venus bounty hunter i'm so sorry uh but let's go ahead and jump on in and take a look at our warframe of the week and i don't think that any of you guys should be shocked at all but of course it is mr loki uh, I'm pretty sure you've seen him in plenty of my videos. In fact, a lot of people have been asking me because I have tweaked the colors a little bit. Um, this is unfortunately using some of those palettes that we ended up getting in, what is it called? In the big bundle bundle. What is it? The the Kuvalich Hunter bundle. I was, I was inspired by all of that and I'm like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make things nice and nice and like flashy but not too flashy we're gonna bring the richness out so if you guys did pick up those palettes i'll go ahead and leave uh the color codes to that down below just do know that it is utilizing that so don't be mad at me um now the reason that i'm bringing you into the simulate room is because of the fact that i need to sh like okay I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on this because we've been doing a lot of stand spotlight stuff as well. But I just I just need I just need to show you a thing. Um and this isn't of course this isn't just solely with Loki, but this is also uh kind of having to do with the weapon setup on him as you guys can see I did have the dual uh Karis on him. And oh, I shouldn't have done that. But uh you will see that I use a specific combo that I absolutely love. Do, do you see how many enemies I'm hitting at once with this one move? Do you do you see? Do you see? I, I don't believe that I have all that much of an extra range mod on this. 
But for those of you guys who may or may not remember, this is legitimately, I mean, like, clearly I'm not really trying with these guys if I really wanted to build up the combo counter, but that is the throw combo. That is the throw combo for, for uh, the Carving Mantis one, and that is block and just stand. So I could just, just, like, of course I need to take a quick break, you know what I mean? But this hits so many enemies, and picture this on someone that is not, like, legitimately, like, well, how do I put this? Picture this on something that's not, like, level 165. Like, you can just walk into clouds of enemies and do this, and don't forget, like, Loki sneaking up on enemies with his stealth multiplier? Woo, child, let me tell you, it was sexy. Let me tell you, it was real sexy. I love it. And, I mean, the rest of the combos on Carving Mantis are pretty fucking awesome, too. But this is legitimately my favorite weapon. Um, and also, wow, I missed that jump. My favorite weapon and also my favorite Warframe for, um hunting down Kuvaliches. Now, I do have a whole long process of hunting down Kuvaliches that I'll talk about in a separate video. In fact, it's the video that I probably should have been working on earlier today, but I did not. Um, and legitimately, this is just my setup with Loki. Um, I use this for basically like a majority of the missions that I do with Kuvaliches. And the one great thing that I absolutely love is number one, um, I was on stream and, you know, I was talking about, you know, using a toxin progenitor, right? Because the toxin damage is just so fucking fantastic on a majority of the Kuva weapons, right? And then people were like, oh yeah, but they throw down that patch and it's really irritating to use and I hate it because they've got miasma. And I was like, who? Who has miasma? And they're like, oh, the toxin progenitor is like, oh yeah. That doesn't happen to me because I'm Loki and I'm invisible and they don't fucking know where I am, like, ever. Literally, they walk around like dummies um, because the AI in Warframe is kind of poo-poo. Uh, but legitimately, I was like, oh, I don't have to worry about any of their ab abilities. You just go invisible and they fucking leave you alone. Um, so I think that Loki is fantastic because you can create whatever progenitor you want to create, right? Say you want electricity, you can go ahead and use one of those. Say you want toxin, you can go one of those. And you don't have to worry about the Lich's moveset. You're just like, bitch, I'm invisible. Don't talk to me. I will fuck you up, whether at range, whether I'm meleeing you, I'm gonna fuck you up and you gonna leave me alone. And so that's one of the things that I absolutely love. The other thing, and I do have footage of this, of course I'm not putting it here because that's a lot of effort, um, is, I, as you guys know, the Kuvaliches sometimes when they spawn, they have the ability to convert other enemies into their thralls, right? Here's the issue. It happens to me all the time where literally a Kuvalich will spawn like three rooms back or they'll spawn far away from other enemies so you can't convert them. Here's a fucking tip. You have two options. You can either bring the enemies to the Kuvalich or you can bring the Kuvalich to the enemies. It's called switch teleport, bitch. So what you do is you find a little line of sight. You switch teleport that Kuvalich. You run the other way. You go ahead and you keep switch teleporting them until they are around other enemies. Or what you do, if you want to do it the other way around, you go ahead and radial disarm all of those enemies and you fucking toss decoys down and leave them like a trail of breadcrumbs to the lich. That way you get all of the conversions and you keep doing this until they're out of juice for thralls because they can't create, you know, they can't create an infinite amount of thralls, but it is like, you know, they have a certain amount that they can create. So once they hit the max, they're not going to create any more thralls, then you can go ahead and move on with your life. Tell me that is not like absolutely fucking fantastic because that way you can get your murmurs, right? And not necessarily have to take on the Lich ASAP, but be able to drain them of all of their juices. So that's just uh, one of the many reasons why I absolutely love Loki as my Kuva Lich Hunter. Think you got think creatively, that's the thing. And I mean, you could do, well, you couldn't do the switch teleport thing with any other um, stealth Warframe, but Loki is definitely one of those frames that has seen me through so many different mission types, can knock out missions very, very quickly, 
if need be. And the thing is, his the the flow from one mission type to another is so much easier. I know that there are other stealth frames out there, but some of them are a little bit slower. Some of them are a little bit more finicky to use. Other ones are ash and just disgusting. <laughs> just kidding. Um, regardless, that's gonna do it for, uh, my Warframe of the Week. Also, let's take a look at the Dual Karis real quick, because it is something I have been rocking with for ages. Now, keep in mind, I do potentially have to tweak my builds, um, because the thing is, you know, there's this whole conversation about condition overload, whether you need prime pressure point or not these days. I've been doing a lot of playing behind the scenes, and, like... I feel like Prime Pressure Point is fucking fine staying in there. I've tried out other things by, like, let's say, removing um, Prime Pressure Point and putting um, other crit damage mods out there. But really what I'm looking at is performance. And at the end of the day, I feel like performance doesn't change that dramatically, at least for this uh, specific setup that I have now that makes you go, Oh my god, that's so crazily different! Um, but that's just how I feel now. I'll, I'll continue to play around and I'll continue to go back through and feel for it because I feel like Prime Pressure Point, it's kind of like where DE is talking about right now, where they have, um, the, the Steel series, like the Sacrificial Steel, um, versus, uh, where is it called? Blood Rush? Where they're like saying, well, one provides more upfront damage, it's just straight out of the gate, and then one provides more scaling damage as you go into later missions. So, listen, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of variants that you can play around with. Um, so a part of me is just kind of like, well, I, we'll see. We'll see how I feel. As you can see, this does have a little bit of a range boost in there, just in case you guys were curious. Because I did have some range on that little spinny ability. Uh, so that's gonna be it. Uh, I also carry this around too, just in case. I, I really like carrying this around. So let's go ahead and jump into our watch list this week. So, uh, I have to say, I don't really have too much on Netflix. I was looking around to see, I was like, is there anything that I really want to watch on Netflix? If you haven't already watched Zombieland, I don't know what's wrong with you, Zombieland 2. I don't know if it's still in theaters, but it came out recently. That's the only thing that's really like, I'm like, oh my god, you gotta watch that. Um, on Amazon Prime, there are some things that I have to watch, like The Expanse, because everybody's been telling me that I gotta go and do that. Mr. Robot is another one on my watch list, and there is another one that I'm thinking of. I think it's called Grimm. Let me know if Grimm is good. But the ones that i am like been watching like nobody's business. Number one, Funny Ass TED Talks. So here on YouTube, for free, you don't gotta pay for this service, whatever, just go up and look up funny TED Talks, everything from procrastination, replying to spam, even cerebral palsy. There are hilarious TED Talks on every single one of them, but not only are the TED Talks like informative and inspiring, they're also, they just make you crack up at the same time and it makes you more receptive to what the speaker has to say. Now, keep in mind, there are some really boring ass TED Talks too, so be aware if you're not laughing within like the first three minutes, I've probably changed onto a different speaker already. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. Keep your eyes out for some good TED Talks. I will go ahead and link um, some of my favorite ones down in the description box below. And then the big winner for me this week is HBO. I know Disney Plus came out. I don't have access to it. I mean, listen, I Rob can't afford everything. But if you're still holding on to your Game of Thrones subscription and forgot to unsubscribe which is me, uh, keep in mind, Watchmen is out. Now, I don't actually remember watching the first movie. The first movie I watched in theaters uh, with this guy I was on a date on, and he was not fun, let's just say that. And not only was he not fun, I think that he fell asleep during the movie. So I didn't really get everything from Watchmen, and I didn't watch, don't know too much about the comic series. I've been keeping up I guess, secondhand from other comic channels that will kind of like give me the gist about it. But uh, all I'm gonna say is there's a lot of interesting things. There's two different storylines or two different timelines happening, one in the past and one in the, I guess you would say, present. And one of them involves um, naked blue man, full on penis. 
couple times. So just in case you're interested in that. And then the last thing that I'm going to recommend is if you're not watching his dark materials, this is based off of the Golden Compass series. I don't exactly know where this falls in the timeline either. Listen, Rob just watches shit that he thinks is cool. And let me tell you, uh, his dark materials, it's looking real good. And I already want to punch people. It's giving me that Game of Thrones feeling all over again where you're like, ooh, I fucking hate them and I just want to kick them repeatedly in whatever genitalia they have. They're that shitty. So a part of me is that and I don't think that I felt that passionate about anything since, you know, wanting to like burn up Cersei in Dragonfire or poison her or whatever, 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 however she goes, I'm happy. Unless it's a big pile of bricks, then that's not so fun, is it? Regardless, uh, that's going to do it for me for now. I do actually have to work on a video that will come out at some point. So uh, leave all of your feelings down in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about, um, what is it called? The, the shows that I actually pointed out specifically on Amazon earlier, The Expanse, uh, Grimm, uh, Mr. Robot. I'm going to watch Mr. Robot. I love Mr. Robot, but I need to like focus. Uh, so let me know how you feel down in the comments below. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.